basically me, myself, and I. All right, that should be starting out in um, YouTube and Facebook. All right, so <clears throat> to just um, go back to the lesson, so everything gets magnified during the full moon. And the Holy Master Dual Kul, the Tibetan teacher, said the full moon is a time of crisis or a time of opportunity, depending on which side of the fence you're at. For the general public, it's a time of crisis because, again, the soul plexus chakra is usually the biggest one, so that's the one that gets magnified the most. The people on the spiritual path, most likely they're more interested in love, in compassion, service. So the heart chakra, the crown chakra, and the upper chakras are more activated. So those get activated more. So during the full moon, they have more intense meditation and a stronger connection. And here's where the secret comes in. If you understand how energy works, you realize that everything gets magnified. Even a person on the spiritual path, we have seeds that can get magnified. Just because you're in the spiritual path doesn't mean that you don't have the things that get simulated that are negative, uh, that are not negative. There are. Same goes with a person on the, not on the spiritual path. Things get magnified, the crazy stuff, and also some good stuff. Now, that leads us to the topic for this full moon. Let me just go back to it. And the fine line between self-confidence and self-delusion, okay? The fine line between self-confidence and self-delusion. Now you're going, there's such a thing? Uh, now, let's break it down a little bit. So some of you go, does it make sense? Well, of course, if you're spiritual, what negative stuff could get magnified? Okay, the simplest way to explain it is something like this. Some of you notice you'll have the deepest meditation. You know, very still, very quiet. You come out blissful, loving, and everything else. And then you notice the next few days, you're supposed to be very loving and caring. And somebody says something you don't like, you snap at them. Or you become more impatient. You go, that doesn't make sense. I'm supposed to be a loving, gentle, spiritual person. Why did I snap on this person? Here's another example. Many years ago, we went on a, not really a retreat, but let's just say a spiritual trip. Okay, my teacher and a few of the students went up the mountain to do intense meditation. When we came back, it was just a, <clears throat> a one-day thing. When we came back, the next morning, I got a call from one of the participants. He says, I need help. I said, what help? Are you okay? What happened? Oh, it was a good meditation. But when I got home, I was looking for liquor. So she went to the store and bought like $20, $30 worth of, of liquor and started drinking. And she says, I don't drink. What happened? I said, ah, okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> Apparently, in some of the chakras, there are seeds of alcohol. Maybe as a kid or a teenager, he, she drank or she has around people, whatever it is. In other words, the seed is there. So when the super intense meditation was done at that time, it's not a full moon, we just did meditation, the chakras got activated. So when the chakras get activated, guess what? Including the seeds. Those seeds, as the chakras get bigger, more energy goes in, that's the little seeds are now being energized, they sprout. It's just like you oftentimes hear of uh, politicians who are supposed to be honest, when they enter office, they become corrupt. Now, I know, let's not get political here, but the idea is very simple. The way my teacher explained it is like this. Let's say that politician is, um, let's just say he's a mayor, he's in charge of a city. He's handling the money of the city. So his basic chakra, the chakra, the base of the spine, handles self-survival and the ability to produce results and produce income. So now he's responsible for that little town. Once he gets you know, elected, let's say he becomes a governor. Now he's now handling, instead of a small town, he's handling hundreds of towns. That means he's handling a responsibility for money that is at least 20, 30 times more than what he used to handle. Now watch this. The chakra that's responsible to producing results, which is the basic, will now correspondingly expand. In other words, when you take on responsibility, the energy center that you need to be able to fulfill your responsibility for that uh, position or that uh, yeah position, basically, that chakra will stretch. It's just like when a, when a woman gets pregnant, the heart chakra instantly gets stimulated. You know, it's a chakra of patience. Make sense? 
So that's why my teacher used to say, you want bigger chakras? Take on responsibility. You don't take, on res take responsibility, bigger responsibility, you just do your meditation, the chakras get big, but it's not being used. So the chakra partially shrinks back. You want to produce, you want to have big chakras? Take on responsibility. So go back to the politician. If that politician handling, a, a, you know, as a mayor handles a little town, if he had seeds of dishonesty, dishonesty, that's like, you know, it crosses his mind. He goes, well, you know, there's a $10,000 there that was donated by whatever, and maybe you can use that to pay my bills. He's not supposed to, right? But let's just, he just cross his mind. So that means the seed is there. But he says, no, no, I don't do that stuff. I'm a good person, right? That's what I, wanted, I want you to listen to this. Now, he's a governor. His chakras enlarge, I don't know, let's just say three, four times or more. More energy goes in. That little seed of dishonesty that used to be a seed is now being constantly energized. So it sprouts. And if his willpower, his spiritual connection is not strong enough, he gives in, boom, there you go, he steals. That's why I remember my teacher used to say, in Hinduism, Lord Krishna, the avatar in, in Hinduism, says a good person is not completely good, a bad person is not completely bad, because even a bad person has seeds of goodness. Okay? Now, what's that got to do with um, self-confidence self -confidence and delusion? Because without understanding this uh, magnification process, we just think, oh, these are just... You know, egotistical people, these are just bad people, oh, these are good people. We have a tendency to categorize or judge because we don't understand that when energy comes in, a person can change. No. What's it got to do with today? Well, during the full moon, everything gets magnified. So we want to take this opportunity, number one, to learn the effects of it. Number two, harness it. And number three, while we're at it, might as well take some spiritual teachings in so we can improve our life and be able to serve others. So to talk about self-confidence, self-delusion, I was thinking, you know, the best way to do this is to read from my teacher's books. This is called uh, Creative Transformation, the Golden Lotus Sutras of Spiritual Practice. Now, sutras, some of you heard of the Heart Sutra, Diamond Sutra. The word sutra means thread. Now, just imagine you have thread with pearls of wisdom strung together. So, pearls of wisdom strung together is what you call sutras. Okay? Now, when these sutras, these threads are woven together, then the fabric is the entire teaching. So, we'll cover that in a, in a in future segment. But now, let me just read something to you. Spiritual purification is very important. Whatever weaknesses are within the disciple or the spiritual practitioner will be magnified. Whatever's in the soil will sprout. Tendencies will come out. That's why some of you notice, yeah, you know, I used to only think of being a good person and being kind to people. As I do more meditation, that becomes very, very strong. Exactly. Your good qualities get magnified. Then you might also notice that, yeah, I used to not like, you know, people who like to curse. It's but now it just irritates the heck out of me. You go, could be because I'm more sensitive, that's possible, but that tendency you have that, oh, I don't like this, also gets magnified. Whatever is in the soil will sprout, okay? Now, next thing he says, I'm just gonna read through certain paragraphs. Pride is an obstacle to spiritual growth. So when you say pride, there's two types, and he goes through it. There are two kinds of pride. Negative pride is looking down on other people. That's a form of self-delusion. Positive pride manifests in doing a job well. Now, let's go to it in more detail. Pride is an obstacle to spiritual growth. It is a manifestation of inaccurate perception and inaccurate perception and shows a lack of self, lack of self-esteem. All right, let's stop there for a second. So, Let's make it <clears throat> simple to, to relate to. After doing a lot of meditation and spiritual practice, your aura gets cleaned, you have clarity. So when you talk to people, you go, man, why, how come this guy is so dumb? 
How come it's taking him so long to understand this? It took me five seconds. I figured it out. Well, first of all, you don't realize that there is, you were not always like this. <laughs> it's because of your practice. That's why you cleared your aura. You raised to a certain level. So you go, oh, that person, hmm, maybe he needs a little time. That's one example. Another example would be something like this. As you do more meditation and spiritual practice, if you're a healer, you're a counselor, you start noticing, yeah, people just talk to me and they feel better. Or I'm a healer, I touch him or I wave my hands and whatever, whatever technique you use, they get miraculously healed. Amazing. Or you're a speaker. It used to be when you speak, you know, people say, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Now when you speak, people go, wow, you're such a good speaker. You just... Uh, inspire me so much and people give you compliments and at some point you go thank you and at some point you go yeah i am that good yeah i'm good i'm very good all right now watch this so far it's self-confidence because you're doing a good job right here's the fine line at some point if you don't watch yourself and all of us have you have a little seed of like need not feeling that you're good enough right that little seed of insecurity or low self-esteem from whatever, as a kid or you had a disappointment in your life, whatever it is, that little seed in there is there. As soon as people start praising you, you go, yeah, mm, yeah, mm, it's good. So your chakras get bigger, more energy goes through. You heal people, you produce results. As the energy goes in, the positive qualities get magnified. What else gets magnified? Those are little insecurities. Then before you know it, yeah, you know, I'm the source of this power. I'm such a fantastic healer. Uh, you know, people should just bow down to me all the time. When they talk to me, they should show me respect. And you don't notice this happening because it's not overnight. It just builds and builds and builds. You go, how dare he talk to me like this? Don't they know who I am? Boom. That's the start of the fall. Because... That fine line of self-confidence is self-delusion. Literally, it's a super, it's almost like a razor's edge. If we don't have a good perception of who we are, that we are simply the channel or the instrument, and we start saying that it is me, myself, and I, how do I know? I've been there more times than I care to remember. I remember every time I... Uh, well, not thank God, not every single time, but many, many times. Uh, my teacher would come to the United States, and then he would start scanning me. Yes, Master. He goes, yeah, yeah, you have to get rid of that negative pride. That's so why you just got here. You see, pride is a thought form. It's an energy form that is lodged in certain chakras. Just like if you have... A lot of resentment and anger is lodged in the front back solar plexus. If you have a lot of love, it's in the heart. So negative pride is also stored in certain chakras. I'll, I'll give them to you. Crown, ajna, throat, front back solar plexus, maybe the basic. So, and also the left brain. So these are where it's stored. So just imagine when energy comes in and we have seeds of this, pfft, it gets big. So what happens? Not only are you looking for attention, you start noticing that, you know, you have to keep talking and sharing to be able to make, to make sure that people know how good you are, how smart you are. And if they don't, guess what happens? That little part of negative pride that's now blooming <laughs> will also manifest as envy. He said, hey, you know, how come that person's good? I, I, I'm better. So it drives you nuts. There's no inner peace. So I remember my teacher for at least 10 years. Every time he comes to the United States, you got to get rid of this. So he'll do healing. He'll have me do certain techniques to disintegrate it. Because you don't know. You just don't notice. In fact, I told him one time, I said, Master, I, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I have negative pride. He says, your students put you on the pedestal. You're getting big-headed. I go, Master, I'm just doing my job. I mean, it must be subconscious. Because I really, I, with all honesty, I thought, I'll just do my job. 
So that's why I said it must be subconscious. You know what he said? With awareness, what is subconscious becomes conscious. Write it down. It is because of my lack of awareness that I did not notice that when I talk, I talk like I know everything. When I talk, when I teach, it feels like, oh, hey, you guys don't know anything. I know everything. I said, well, I don't talk like that. Then he explained, it's not what you said. It's the tone you said it. People have this perception that you're a know-it-all. <laughs> so as I did more meditation, I started watching. Here's the important part. This is the lesson I want all of you to take home. Well, you're already home. Is you are the soul, and awareness and mindfulness is simply the soul observing. Write it down. And I remember when my teacher told me that, when I'm teaching, when I'm talking, part of me is constantly watching, observing. Actually, that part is the real eye, observing. Hey, I say that with a little bit of a, you know, lace with a little bit of, like, I know I'm better than you type of deal. Or when I said something, there's a little bit of like, how dare you question me? I didn't even notice those things before. Then when it was told to me like that, I go, Okay, okay, well, I mean, hey, who wants to fall, right? <laughs> so after doing meditation, I would be more careful. I go, you know, I said that with a little, I think I was trying to show that person how good I am. Well, all I'm doing is doing my job. Okay, 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 let me change the words. And it's interesting, over time, it changed by simply practicing what? Awareness. So that's the first step, being aware Hey, when I talk to people, do I like trying to cover up my insecurities by saying how good I am, how smart I am? That's why he said, spiritual practice requires, write this down, ruthless self-honesty. If you've attended class with me, you know this many times you will ask me a certain question, I go, I don't have a slightest idea. And people say, yeah, but come on, tell us. I go, I have no clue. I didn't used to be like that. Before I would like, well, you know, they asked me a question. I'm supposed to be premier teacher, blah, 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 whatever. I'll not, I won't make it up, but I'll just kind of say something to just make him feel like at least, at least I answered something, even though it didn't make much sense. Then as the teacher reminded me, I go, nobody's expecting you to know everything. If you don't know anything... Just tell them. Why did I think of that? Because I was trying to cover up this insecurity. So the way my teacher explained it, something like this, he says, negative pride, which is self-delusion, is actually like support, like a crutch. Because as that person is trying to develop self-esteem, they need to create an image that they're better than they really are not realizing they don't need it. They just need to be practice self-honesty. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. I know this. I have no clue what the heck these things are. Make sense? And so if a person develops self-honesty, then self-honesty removes self-delusion. This is, I remember my teacher used to say, self-delusion or negative pride is the last negative quality a spiritual aspirant or practitioner or spiritual disciple lets go. In other words, they could practice, you know, uh, loving kindness. It could be extremely loving. It can be kind, non, uh, non-injurious. They could be generous. They don't steal. They'd be hardworking, Right? They're not lazy. They practice more. They have all these different qualities they've developed over one lifetime or many. But the one that is usually the last one to leave is that little facade called negative pride. Because as you produce more miracles, as you help more people, at some point, you forget you're not, you're not the source, you're the channel. That's why if you've been with me in Anchor the Light, one of the things that we had you write down is, 
You want to accomplish great things? Be the channel, not the source. Besides, we're not the source anyway. You know, it's interesting. Uh, a few weeks ago, or two, a week and a half ago, I was with uh, Sage Robbins, you know, Tony Robbins' wife. And she's into meditation. She's very spiritual. She's, you know, she heals a lot of people too. And we just have this discussion about healing. And uh, during that discussion, we said, yeah, we oftentimes forget we're not the healers. We're just simply the channels. God is the one that's healing through us. And when you draw life force from the environment, you give it to the patient or the client, exactly. It's not coming from you. It's coming through you. And that's why I really love the, what do you call this, the, the verse that St. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, through, is a magic word, that strengthens me. The magic word is through. Now, how do you get, get rid of this negative pride? Number one, as we said, practice ruthless self-honesty. If you start noticing that you're making things up in your head, like, well, you know, when I meditate, I see this brilliant light, and you go, oh, that means I'm super clairvoyant and super psychic. Maybe you are psychic, but not super. <laughs> There's a difference. And before you know it, you go, well, you know, everybody has to listen to me because I have a strong connection. Because I get signals from the higher words. And I actually have people like that, they go, you know, <laughs> this, I know this sounds bad, but I'll just tell you anyway. You know, we have students says, you know, I channel five masters or three masters from the higher world, ascended masters. And I remember I didn't say anything because I don't have any basis to say anything about it. So I remember talking to my teacher. I said, Master, you know, this person claims that he's uh, channeling the Holy Master Katumi, you know, all these great ascended masters. I said, just being very nice, very kind. He goes, uh, not too likely. You know how busy these teachers are? What is this person doing? I said, what do you mean? Well, to have the attention of one ascended master, you must be doing something that is changing or helping, massively helping the evolution of the planet. To have three? I go, I said, you're right. He goes, exactly. So that person is, has some form, some form of self-delusion. We even have another student, he goes like this, he goes, he claims he's so advanced, he's more advanced than Buddha, more advanced than Christ, he's more advanced than the planetary logos and higher beings. And I'm going, really? Of course, I don't say anything. This, but his life is a mess. The thing they have a job. Uh, something wrong with the picture. That's called self-delusion. So that's why it's so important to practice what? Self-honesty. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. And another part of it that will help in raising awareness is watching the feedback from other people and the environment. If you start noticing, you start claiming to be the Messiah and people start leaving, you start going, okay, maybe I'm a little crazy. <laughs> now you're going, hey, that's not positive self-talk. I don't care what you call it, positive or negative. It is what it is. That's why, here's the thing, by practicing self-honesty, humility becomes the byproduct. Not false humility, because I just noticed that some of you are commenting, but when you're humble, people beat up on you. Actually, humility shows you have inner strength, because you don't need to prove anything to anybody. You don't, because I'm a good person. This is what I know. This is what I don't know. I don't care what you say. That's why you'll notice people who talk a lot are usually empty inside. You know, there's a Chinese saying, an empty cup makes noise. A full cup doesn't. So a person who knows, really knows, is humble, perceive as humble because they don't need to keep telling people, hey, you guys, listen to me. Look at me. I'm very advanced. I'm very good. They don't need to. They just show with their actions. 
they show with the results. You don't like it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't bother them, it doesn't matter. So the fine line of self-delusion and self-confidence is easily erased by practicing awareness. So when I talk to this person, I'm giving this information is because that they will think highly of me or because I'm trying to serve them. So they'll understand, oh, this energy will help you. This herb will help you. Is it because to show them, you know, I'm an, a great, the best herbalist in the universe? Or is this simply because I know that this will help that person? What's that? You're not trying to be humble. You're just trying to be you, honestly. Watch this. Pride causes the disciple to distort spiritual teachings. How many times have you heard people use spiritual teachings of their teachers, distort it for personal gain? Because of this pride saying, hey, I need to know how people to know how good I am. So I'm going to tell, start telling people, you know, my chakra is 20 feet big. <laughs> my spiritual connection, I'm connected to this. I'm downloading. It's like. Do people need to know that? Did I ask you? No. So why are you opening a big mouth? Uh. Yikes. <laughs> right? Did I ask you, by the way, how big are your chakras? Did I ask you? Did I ask you, hey, did you get a download last night from so-and-so? We didn't ask you. So why do you have to go blah? Because you need to show I'm very, very advanced. Now watch this. When disciples, of course, this is, you know, he talks about disciples, spiritual practitioners, okay? When disciples, spiritual practitioners are bloated with pride, they cannot hear anymore. The student self-inflates himself or herself because of pride, because of that he is incapable of absorbing any teaching. Translation, not teachable. You don't know everything. Have you ever met people who, you're not even done with your sentence, I know, I know, I know. You notice that? I can't tell you how many times I've met students like that, you know, in class. They'll ask me a question. I'm trying to explain, well, you know, based on your question, this is this goes, I know, I know, I know. If you already know, why are you wasting my time asking me a question? See? Here's another one. I love this one. <clears throat> and uh, this is the thing. This is how you tell the difference between a more, let's just say, mature spiritual practitioner and a little more not so mature. We go to dinner. It was myself, my teacher, and let's say 15 students, right? We're in dinner table and talking. And you can always tell. <clears throat> the ones with low self-esteem are usually the loudest one. They're usually the loudest one. In fact, it drives me nuts because I'm here to listen to the big guy, not you yak about how good you are. But I sit there, but just quiet. And this person, Master, I did this, and the other day I was seeing this, I saw this light, I'm going. And it keeps going. And before it, another person chimes in. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, yes, Master, I was doing meditation, I saw this brilliant light, and, and it went on and took over the whole table. I go, mm-hmm. And I was watching Master Cho, he was just quiet. Oh, yeah, yeah, very nice. Uh-huh, very good. I knew. And then after the dinner, he would make, he was like, ah, talk to that person, the one that was quiet. Yeah, t ask him his insight. I go, why is he asking about the insight about the guy who claims to know everything? It's obvious. He could see right through them. So as we watch ourselves, as the soul observes, that's how we evolve. Because with the, without the ability to observe, watch this. The self-delusion are basically clouds of thought forms that envelop the soul. And before we know it, we do not see clearly. We just see our thoughts and emotions that we've created. That's called self-delusion. Self-confidence comes when the aura and chakras are cleansed on a regular basis and so much divine energy is flowing through us. And that energy is used not only to help ourselves, 
but to heal others, to uplift others, and help humanity, help the evolution of the planet, as more of that energy comes through us, we accomplish great things. We go, I'm confident this can be done because God can do it through me. Then you produce miracles. That's it. You want to do great things? You want to accomplish great things? Be the channel, not the source. Let's meditate. <clears throat> to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok Sui, Mahagu Jumiling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love, Thank you for divine wisdom. Thank you for blessing us with a loving heart, an intelligent mind, and a powerful will. Not that we could glorify ourselves, but to be able to be channels and instruments of divine mercy and compassion to the entire world. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. <clears throat> now put your hands together like this. Put your attention in your crown. I am that. I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thoughts. I am the soul that creates the thoughts, creates the feelings, as well as the movements of this body. I am the soul, the thinker, the feeler, and the mover. That's me, the soul, the spiritual self, the observer. Be still. I, the soul, am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. We're all children of God. That's why we're still growing and evolving, right? However, we are one with God. We are one with all. There's only oneness. Just be still. Just gently be aware of your crown, maybe a few inches above your crown. I am that. I am the soul. I am one with my higher soul. I am one with the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There's only oneness. We are one. Just be still. Experience your true essence. Minus the thoughts, the feelings that you've created. Just experience your real self. Be still. Now imagine all of us are brilliant beings of light inside the brilliant sun looking out into the solar system. Just say we are one. And just say we are lights within a greater light. We're one with God's presence in the solar system. Or in ancient teachings, we're one with the solar logos. We're one with God, we're one with all. There's only oneness. Be still. We are one. Now open your hands in blessing. Look out into the solar system, focusing on Mother Earth. Just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. We're one with God, we're one with all. Now be aware of your heart, your hands. Project beautiful pink light from your heart, collectively through the sun, and flood the entire Earth. And silently repeat after me, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, 
let me show unconditional love. Bless your home, bless your workplace, bless your city, state, country, bless the entire earth with peace and unconditional love. For this injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. For this doubt, let me sow faith. For this despair, let me sow hope. Let's recall people we know or countries we know going through difficult times right now. Could be your relatives, your friends, could be family members, could be anyone you know. Or it could be places like Iran, Syria, Turkey, Ukraine, Venezuela, many parts of Africa, the Middle East, countries you know where people are suffering. May all of them be blessed with hope and with faith and a better life. So be it. Just be still. Just be where be a heart and fill the earth with beautiful pink light, blessing every person, every being, especially the areas where people are going through challenging times with hope and with faith and a better life. So be it. We're just the channels the pipelines for these blessings to flow through. So be it. For there's darkness, let me sow light. Darkness is the ignorance of one's true nature that we're beings of light. May all be blessed with light, spiritual light and spiritual awakening. So be it. So be it. And where there's sadness, let me sow joy. Just be aware of your heart, your hands. Just flood the earth with so much beautiful pink light. Blessing every person, every being with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and lots of joy. So be it. Just be still. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. One more time. Be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. One more time. Be aware of your heart. Lift that loving energy up to your crown. Exhale. Now just stay there. Be aware of your crown in your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful golden light. Just say our souls are one. And just imagine golden light from your crown flowing out of the sun and filling the entire earth. Just say our souls are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love, and with kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception, so be it. Bless your home, your workplace, with lots and lots of golden light. If you know any friends or relatives going through challenging times in their life, bless them with divine golden light. Countries, Turkey, Syria, still reeling from the earthquakes. Be blessed with hope and with faith, with golden light. Iran, Ukraine, many parts of the world that people are still suffering, but they don't make it in the news. Fill those with golden light. So be it. So be it. Now, be aware of your heart and your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Be aware of your entire body. One more time. Be aware of your heart and crown. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your entire body. Gently exhale. You're oozing with golden light. Be aware of your heart, your crown. Take a deep breath. 
Hold it. Be still. Be aware of your crown all the way down to your feet, your arms, everywhere in your body. Gently exhale. Now, be aware of your heart, your crown, your hands. Imagine golden light even brighter than before, just flowing through of all of us, through the sun and filling up the entire earth. Fill the earth with super intense golden light. And just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. We're one with God, we're one with all. Be still. From the center of the heart of God, may every person, every being on earth, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, may all beings in every dimension, every direction on earth be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace, with inner healing. And for so many right now, physical, emotional, mental, and even financial healing. May all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, with goodwill, and the willingness to do good. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. May all be blessed. So be it. Blessings be to all. Now lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just imagine a beautiful golden star floating above your head. A brilliant, brilliant golden star. Just be aware of your heart. Allow the love within your heart to gently rise up, up to the center of your head. Up, 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 past your crown and into the golden star. Ah! Stay there. Just be aware of that beautiful golden star. Just look at that golden star and silently just say, I am that. That I am. I am that. That I am. I am that brilliant, brilliant self of light. That self am I. I am that radiant being of light. I am that radiant self of light. That self am I. Just be still. I am that. That I am. Be aware of the beautiful, intense golden light and listen. Oh, allow your awareness to just drift into that space before the next home. and attention is drifting deeper and deeper into that empty space between ohms. Just stay there. is now completely inside that brilliant golden star. The entire awareness is in that golden light. 
be still and just let things happen. The light is getting brighter and brighter. You realize that light is you. Just be still. I am that. That I am. stillness and just simply let go let go and let whatever happens happens now any sound any noise you hear will just help you dissolve deeper and deeper into that brilliant light right now let go Gently, very slowly, very gently and slowly come back, raise your hands in blessing, picture the people you love in front of you, flood them with beautiful golden light, may all of them be blessed with good health, with much happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and spiritual oneness, so be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine and your hands. Put your golden light down into the earth. This is very, very important. Put your golden light down into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now, open your eyes. I hope you have a good meditation. Now, what we always do during the full moon, you have so much energy, right? 
And what you usually ask you to do is write down, if you haven't already, write down all your goals that you want bless. I'm not the one blessing it. We're doing it. It's just the energy is flowing to us. You have so much energy. We're going to use it to bless your projects. You know, some of you want a better job. Uh, you want your health to improve, your relationships, whatever it is, like your wish list. Okay, most of you have been with me for a while. You know, you write this down, put it in front of you. After meditation, okay? Now, if you're new with us, you got to know it's a little strange, but you've gone this far, you might as well go the way. I want you to just picture what are the things you want to manifest or materialize in your life. Again, just think of what you want. You want better health? Is there some health issue you want to be better, you or someone you know? Do you want your finances to improve? Is there your business, your job to get better, your income, uh, your relationships? Uh, is there a relationship you're trying to mend or make better? Uh, could be a spiritual goal that you've been wanting. You want to go to a certain place. You want to read a, a special uh, spiritual book that you know will uplift you, whatever it is. Basically, your wish list, okay? Either you visualize it in front of you or the ones who written down, put it in front of you. The ones who took the Kri Shakti Prosperity class, you already know what to do. It's in front of you. <clears throat> we'll give, the ones who are new, we'll give you maybe another you know, 30 seconds or a minute. Just think about it. And some of you want to write it down. Well, we'll go through it, okay? Step by step. This is very important that you use this energy. Now, a lot of people don't realize that that same energy for spirituality when channeled properly, can be used to improve your finances, your relationship, your health, and your mental development, and spiritual development. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm just talking here so you guys can get it ready. Okay. So, put it in front of you if you wrote it down. Uh, if you're picturing, just picture it in front of you. Everyone, put your hand like this. Okay, just project golden light towards it, all right? Just say, we are one. So when you say, we are one, instead of just you, energy flowing through you, it's a gigantic pipeline, okay? Project golden light. Keep going. We'll give you some extra boost. Just keep charging it with golden light. See it materialize already according to the divine plan. Be happy about it, the blessings of God, the help, all the great ones, all the great, all the great masses, saints, archangels, holy, the blessings of God and all the high beings. May all your wishes, your aspirations be divinely blessed by God. Properly, so be it. Just keep charging it with golden light. Keep going, keep flooding it with golden light. Keep energizing it. The last two swords. All right. So, shall we give thanks? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, we thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, we can take whoever you want to. Personally, to my beloved and respected teacher, Master Chokok Sui Mahago Jumailing, thank you. To the Lord Christ, to the Lord Buddha, to all the high beings, thank you, in full faith. And so it is. All right, so thank you very much for joining me. Now, just a quick announcement. I know some of you um, had a good experience. Well, full moon meditation. Next month is the first of the three super powerful full moons of the year. And I'm just going to show that to you right now. The ones who, uh, if you're on Instagram, you, you'll see this later. So next month, April 5th, Wednesday, is full moon of Aries. This is the preparation, okay? Preparation to purify our aura, our chakras, 
even more. That's why we call them vehicles of the soul. The most powerful full moon of the year is actually on May 5th. That's called the Wesak Festival. All right, so just imagine. What, first, it's to prepare, purify, disintegrate a lot of the stuff. Just whatever we did now, we just multiply it. Just clean some more. And then uh, the full moon of May is the most powerful full moon. That's the peak. And then the full moon of... Uh, <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Gemini is the distribution of energy. These are the three most powerful full moons of the year. According to one astrologer, I, can, I have no idea how he calculated this, but if you do the meditation during this time, except especially the full moon of uh, May, in that one hour, whatever time you meditate, the energy you generate spiritually is equivalent to meditating continuously for a month. Again, I don't know how he came up with this, but we know it's powerful. So if you're lazy, you know which ones to catch. All right? Now, for the last three and a half, three years, yeah, we've been doing an even deeper preparation. I'll show this to you. It's a seven days of purification before the Wesak Festival. So from April 28th to May 4, every single day for seven days, we'll have a lecture and workshop and then healing in the morning and at night. So it's seven days. So you, I hope you don't get tired of me. So we're going to have... A healing, basically, for different aspects like anger, resentment, jealousy, all the different spiritual poisons, if you will, that prevent us from spiritually harnessing all this divine energy coming down during the Wesak Festival. So things don't get magnified, that's one. And to amplify certain good qualities. So first will be the healing. Just basically make sure you have salt water bucket. I'll have a crystal. We do healing on you. And uh, it's part of self-healing too. After that, we go into a lecture for an hour, hour and a half, depending on how much it is. So it's a workshop where we go through the Eightfold Path. These are the eight lessons that Lord Buddha taught. Right viewpoint, right thoughts, right words, right actions, right livelihood. We go through it step by step every single day with the lecture and the workshop where we sit down and go, okay, what does it mean to have right viewpoint? What is wrong viewpoint? What are the wrong viewpoints in my life? What are the right viewpoints? Okay, we do that every single day. And then the evening session, because there's uh, people in different time zones who can make it in the morning, we do another healing live session. So some of you, I think a lot of you, actually catch both of them. But the ones who are in a different time zone, if you can't, at least you'll be able to catch one of the healing, either morning or evening. But the lecture will be recorded. So if you catch it in the morning, because if you're working, you can watch it at night. That's for seven days so that when the full moon of Wesa comes in, you be prepared. We've done this for three years now, and uh, the group just keeps growing, growing with thousands of people joining. So the more energy that join, the more people that join, more energy flows through us. All right, so uh, that's going to be April 28th to May 4th. Anyway, this is just uh, to let you know when it's coming so you can mark your calendars. Other than that, namaste, everyone. We will see you soon. This is Monday, so on Wednesday, we continue with Anchor the Light. Twice a day, mon morning, evening, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Unless I'm traveling. So, Namaste, take care. Have a beautiful full moon night, day. And uh, we leave this online so you can watch this as many times as you like. Do the meditation. Bless your projects and so on and so on. Namaste, take care. God bless. And we'll see you soon.